Okay, so it is that time of year again. We're about to rank all the rider lineups in MotoGP for this 2023 season. This is always my most successful video of the year. So thank you very much uh, for, you know, making it a good one, I guess. So we're just going to do it again. We're just going to do it every year. Forever, forever, 100 years. Oh, because it always gets loads of views. I guess we should just start at the bottom. Number 11. So I think the 11th best rider lineup, or you could say the worst rider lineup in MotoGP for 2023. By the way, guys, this is this is my, the hardest year ever, I think. I thought last year was pretty difficult. This I found this a lot harder because obviously with the reshuffle that's happened, there's some good riders ended up in some teams where they wouldn't normally be in. You know, factory riders ending up at satellite teams and things like that. So it is a difficult one. Now that I've made all my excuses, feel free to type your outrage in the comments because I've got Gas Gas Tech Toi La as my worst rider lineup of the, of the year. Uh, Polish Bargaro, maybe harsh on him this one, but he's got the rookie uh, Augusto Fernandez in there. Not that I think Augusto's a bad rider by any means either but i mean maybe i got this one the wrong way around because now that i'm thinking about it maybe my next team that i've got in 10th is maybe a little bit worse but well, look i think augusto is probably one of the least talented guys that's come from moto 2 to moto gp in the last few years last, well, last two years i say that because he didn't beat any of the guys <laughs> that are already in there and ones that have already been booted so that he could have that spot. So, but I mean, you can only beat who's there and he did and good on him, but yeah, I've, I've got them last. But like I said, maybe I don't because at number 10, I've got Rossini, Ducati, Rossini. I guess it's Alex that has uh, kept them. I just see something there. I think I have a good season. Is he better than Paul Spargo? Maybe, maybe not. You know what? I'm swapping these. I'm swapping them. I'm swapping. Grassini's 11. Tech 3. Gas Gas is, is 10. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Because I don't think Digi's probably as good as Augusto Fernandez. And is Alex Marquez better than Paul Espargaro? Similar credentials, I suppose. Is Paul better? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Tech 3's 10th. Grassini's 11th. We're doing shit on the fly here, guys. It's just not, it's not a perfect science. Picking this. It's fine by the seat of our pants, as the saying goes. In at number nine, I've gone for the LCR Honda team. Alex Rins and Takanakagami. Touch harsh on Rins this one, but I had to find a place for these guys. Like I said, it was very difficult this year with guys like Rins going to teams like this, where normally, you know, last season line up Marquez and Takanagami, you could just happily settle them down in ninth and it wouldn't be a problem. I just, it's not that I think this is a bad team. I think Tak is solid enough and I think Rins has the outright pace to go and do a lot of good, but I just have the other teams higher. I just, I don't know why. That's just what I've done. So let's move on to number eight. Number eight, I've got the VR46 lineup, Bezeki and Marini. I think these is a strong, it's a very solid team, this. They, it's hard to split these two. They do get good results consistently. Um, and I think Bezeki and possibly Marini as well are probably going to take a step this season. I think, you know, another year under their belts. Um, the team's a year older. They've learned a bit on, the, the, on their ability. I think they, because they're, they're so solid and consistent, the two of them generally, and they do show speed at times. I think, I think they're pretty good. Into number seven. We have the RNF Aprilia. I think this is really strong. It's only got them halfway up the list, but or well, not even. But like, I, I do think that's how strong everyone else is this year. I think this is really strong. Obviously, Raul will have to prove a bit this year. Um, and that last year was just a blip and the bike was terrible and all that stuff. Uh, he has a chance to do that here. You know, Oliveira, we know he's quick. He's a race winner. He can do the job. Look good in that, that postseason test. He, he already put down a, a good marker for, for the Aprilia guys to sort of go, oh, okay, yeah, no, this guy can do it. On a, on a new bike so yeah i think this is a talented lineup very talented it'll all depend on whether ralph fernandez though last year was just a blip for him or if maybe he's not built for moto gp i suspect he definitely is built for moto gp so let's see just above them i do have the factory aprilia team proven race winner in maverick vinales although i don't know if he necessarily will be I'm the second best aprilia i think that one of the other two guys could take it to him we know alicia's quality the guy's just mr aprilia now isn't he and and I think he'll bring last year's form into this season and they'll look real good. They'll look real good. It's just whether Mav can get up forward a bit more often, a bit inconsistent with the amount of times he gets himself into those podium sort of contending positions. 
At number five, the Pramac Ducati team, Johan Zarco, Jorge Martin. Again, another one that in the past I've rated quite highly. This year we've dropped them down a little bit. Again, because there are just top lineups all over the grid now. There are just top lineups all over the grid. And it's only just put these guys fifth. Perhaps could be higher. Martin is a talent. Zarco, we know his quality. But this is just where I've worked them. <laughs> I've just worked them into fifth because there's, I think, four better ones. At number four, we're going KTM factory team. Brad Binder, I think, is elite. If we put him on a Ducati tomorrow, I think he'd definitely be in title contention. Jack Miller, we know what happens when he is on a Ducati, and it's not quite title contender, but it's not far off. This is a really strong team. Jack Miller obviously has race winning abilities when he's got the right bike. He'll bring a lot to KTM. First of all, he'll bring the Ducati knowledge with him. Second of all, he brings a lot of character. And I think a company like KTM probably needs a good character like that at the moment. And I think this is a really strong lineup. This is one of the lineups. I'd be, if, if you just offered me two guys, you've said, I could, you're starting a team tomorrow. I can offer you Brad Binder and Jack Miller. I'd be thrilled with that. I'd be thrilled. This is a top team. These two guys are awesome. I obviously think Jack's quality, you know, because he's, he's one of me. And like I said, Brad Binder's awesome. So let's move on though. We're up to number three, and this is where I've got the factory Yamaha team. I, I had this team everywhere from as low as like seventh up to as high as second at some points, but I've got them settled them in at three. Fabio Quattararo is probably the best on the grid at the moment, which is mainly why they're that high. And I think, think Franco Morbidelli, I mean, we know he's been struggling, but I think his best of his best of his ability is way better, way better. It's, it's closer to Fabio than it is to the back. I'm just gonna do that thing where like, <laughs> I just back Morbidelli to get good again, which I do seem to do. It's going to become a yearly thing for me. I'm just going to be like, well, I've, he's going to turn it around because I've seen how good he's been in the past. Hopefully that's the case. If he doesn't, it will be, well, there's a chance that it is his last MotoGP contract. If he doesn't turn it around here because of the limited spaces on the grid. So he has another poor season. That could be it for him. But look, we'll back him. We can only back him to turn it around because we know what he's done in the past. We can only back him. Number two, I've got Repsol Honda team. Again, this is Mark Marquez's ability shining through here. And not that Ryan Mir isn't quality himself, but he did not finish the season well, which makes me think, you know, was he worth having this team that high with a potentially not 100% fit Mark or a Mark that isn't capable of getting back to where he's been in, at his peak? And then you've got Ojuan Mir who seems to be declining a touch. There I say it. But I still think you've got one of the greatest riders of all time and a world and a recent world champion in the team. I mean, this is a very good pairing for Honda. Mark's the guy that can go and win you the races. Ryan Mir, if he gets to his best, if he's at his best, he's consistently bringing the home in the same position. Like, it's just all the time. It's like clockwork. Like, I'll just finish the race. And where I'm at is where the bike is about at. You know, this is kind of what he did at Suzuki for most of the time. <laughs> Which means that our number one team is Anaya Bastianini and world champion Pecco Bagnaia. Probably picked itself this year because you've got the world champion Pecco can do the business. We know it. And Anaya looks like, I'm telling you, there'll be a few people out there that'll going to back Bastianini to be better than Pecco this season. And that's a dangerous thought for a lot of these other teams because Pecco's at the front more often than he's not. And if Anaya's going to be beating him, then he's going to be winning a lot of races. And that's my rankings for the year. And let's hope that this racks up a ton of views like it did last season and the season before. And now recently, I also split the grid up to not teammate battles. There is one teammate battle in there. I split the grid up into pairs and I asked you, I polled you on YouTube and on Twitter about who you thought was going to score more points out of all of these battles. And you can watch that video right here. And otherwise, that's it. That's what we've got for you here. Thanks for watching my video. I'll see you on the next one.